Welcome to Discovering. Tonight, we're running with the little dogs, and we're on the hunt for rabbits. It's the most fun you can have with a dog, really, out in the woods. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night, and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. This winter, I spent some time learning all about beagles, beaglers, and rabbit hunting with Jason Zazeski of Devil's Creek Kennel in Besmer. My name is Jason Zazeski. We're in South Besmer, Michigan, west end of UP. I've been a beagler pretty much my whole life. I think I got my first dog that was my very own when I was 13. Had beagles ever since. I always was a hunter. I dabble a little bit in field trials, and as I got older, Priorities change, a little bit of work, a lot of work when I was in my 20s, into my 30s. And as I got older, I started focusing a little bit more on the dogs and things like that, and decided, me and my wife decided to make a big investment into doing things we love. So we moved from our house in town where we only had two beagles to, oh dear, where we got seven. <laughs> we don't have any kids, so I guess you could say our dogs are our family. <laughs> She couldn't be here today, she's working, but she's just as big into bee going as I am. She's a AKC field trial judge. Uh, she's, she hunts and field trials. She just loves the dogs as much as I do. Her name, she's a female. Her real name's Wilga, but we call her Willie. Will, Will the Beast. It's like a Wilga Beast, but different. Oh, they're 13 inch beagles. A lot of them are blue tick. I, it's just a color preference I have. They, Remind me of a uh, mini bear dogs just by their color. They range anywhere in the year from a young one's one year old, oldest is seven. Come on, tough girl. She, well, she ain't that old, but six or so. Okay, her birthday. She's a good dog, though. She still gets out there? Oh, yeah. Most of Jason's dogs are uniquely named after Polish woodsmen or old beaglers he knew. Tuffy Polanski, we got Wilga Buzikowski, uh, we have a Harry Sawaski, we have Ziggy Urbanski. So a lot of their names, even though they're females, might have a male name. Uh, Are any of these guys still living? I mean, no, no, they're all. They've all passed. They've all passed. Most of them were loggers, though. <laughs> you know, I work in the woods myself, so got to know a few. <laughs> Bozo Dombowski, that's another one that. Come on, Bozo. Good boy. He wants to go, but he, he went yesterday. We went hunting and he got eight rabbits in front of him. Mr. Clyde's almost a field champion. Real soon here. Come on, Mr. Clyde. Come up. where's the girls? Get the bunnies. Her name's Shelby. Shelby's a year old and Will are the same age. This is Penny. Twenty one cent. Hemi. What do I like about beagles? Yeah. They're small, they're affectionate, they're loyal, and they don't have the big vet bills. So that's uh that's my draw to the beagle. Come on girls, get them! We checked out the Zazeski's 80-acre running enclosure. 
a safe space to run and train the dogs. It's grown up old farmland. There's a lot of tag elder, a lot of uh, few good blocks of aspen, younger uh, 10 year old aspen. When aspen starts getting over that 15 year old mark, you start losing your habitat. So I stay pretty proactive on keeping it mowed down a little bit and always regening, regenerating to keep the rabbits happy. Uh, it's the best food for them and the best cover. Cut down a lot of popples in the winter time because that's what the rabbits feed on. Not only does it make good feed for the winter, it gives them a good place to have their babies in the summer. Dogs don't really go in there anymore and they have to, so it's kind of like a nursery for young hare. I really like the tag elder aspect of things. Uh, it keeps birds of prey and things like that from swooping in and snipering them off the ground. And it slows down the run of the dogs too. There's no rhyme or reason to tag elders, so that will keep them, keep your run a little bit slower and not pressure the rabbit so much. A rabbit's not really an endurance animal like a beagle is. They haven't been bred for endurance. They're more of a sprinter than a marathon runner. This is a gazebo we sit in that in the summer and run the dogs. There's six miles of trails here, most of which all are mowed with uh, lawnmowers. What keeps the rabbits in and other critters out is a large fence around the perimeter. It's a half mile long. There's a fence post every seven feet. Five feet tall with a two foot apron on it. Digging. Yeah, it keeps things from digging. Then electric wire around the top, keep things from crawling. Keeps the fishers, porcupines, coons out of it. We chase the beagles around as those athletic little dogs work the rabbits. Each dog has a tracking collar on and Jason can see where they are at all times. I use tracking systems, Garmin Alpha 300s. Me and my wife each have them. It's a lot easier to keep tabs on your dogs uh, where they are. Tells you the distance, satellite overlay. See, now it's gonna show the dogs coming to us. Come on, girls. <laughs> and they're here. This block, Zig, come on, he's in here, Zig. Come on, Ziggler. And makes it easier to hunt, it does. You can, you can get a pattern down a little better. Um, what direction the rabbit's going so you can shuffle into position. And they let you know when they find a rabbit. That's Clyde. They got the farm dog park and Ziggy got that big, sounds like an old car horn. Arr, arr. And blue sounds like a coyote. Every dog has individual voice. You can hear, you can tell which one's doing what at a loss or starting the rabbit or catching up or you spend enough time with them, you'll, they'll, you can pick out their voices pretty easy. Come on, Blue. Where is he? He's in here somewhere. Run him up. Look at about 50 yards down. Possibly. There it goes. The dogs are going to cross there now. That wasn't the one they're chasing. That's what you call a side jumper. How do you know there was a rabbit going to come out of there? Just the direction they're coming, whether it's the one they're chasing or one that was sitting there, they'll do that. They'll, uh, kind of like a steamroller going through the woods, pushes everything out in front of it. You never know what comes out. Sometimes a deer, a bobcat, a... <laughs> no. Okay. Get ready, there's gonna be another one coming by here in a second. There it goes, two. See what I mean? It pushes everything out of that block. That's Clyde. Now all the action's gonna be down in that block. Yeah, I wonder if we should go down to that next one though. I don't know how much you really train a beagle. They've been bred like this for a few hundred years, I guess. Their pedigree goes back for half a century, you know. They they were just bred to be rabbit dogs. And for the northern climate, a lot of the dogs up in the UP and stuff are bred for that more northern snow nose and endurance and thicker coats and bigger feet and bigger bones and things like that. Here he is. Come on, girls. Come on. In here. Come on. This side. Hey, 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 hey. Thick. Come on. Here he is. Come on, Blue. The best way to train a beagle is give it opportunity. I'd say just spend time with it in the woods and let it do what it naturally does. You can tweak it one way or another, whether you want it to go maybe a little faster, a little looser, but in general, yeah, just got to give it good opportunity. That's Mr. Clyde. He, that's where that one crossed. He's sniffing. The old ones go out, the, you know, the ones over five years old probably go out once a week. Uh, younger ones go out 
well, I'd say twice a week. And if, depending on day and stuff, at the minimum is three hours, and most of the time it's three to five, depending on how the running and conditions are. We don't make them go out there when the weather's too bad, you know, weather, uh, rain or snow or a blizzard. But sometimes I send them out in a solo by themselves because especially the young ones, that's when they really learn uh, their confidence and how to do it on their own. Any dog can do it in a group, but it takes a little, a little more dog to do it by itself. So one of the prerequisites to be one of my beagles, you gotta be able to do it by yourself. And then, you know, I'll pack them together. Maybe I'll solo them two, three times and then pack them with a, another two or three dogs. <laughs> Another thing I learned this winter, it's not hard to round up a group of hunters for a day of chasing dogs through the woods after some rabbits. With all these dogs, how do you decide which ones to take hunting? My kennel is kind of like a golfer's bag. Every dog is a specialist in its own way. Some are really good on the tough scenting days and some are just a ball of fire on the hard or easy scenting days on sod. And I always look at what the weather is and I know my dogs well, I spend a lot of time with them. Uh, and what dogs I'm gonna to pair together. You know, not every dog is the same and they don't match well. It's kind of like humans, you know. Some are compatible and some aren't. Some of the older retired dogs, I like to take them more so than the younger ones. I think hunting is a real big reward for a dog. You know, uh, get to go to a different place, get to travel, get to ride in the truck on the way home. So in order for me to take a dog hunting, it, you gotta earn your seat at the table for that. And every now and then if I see a young, talented dog I got, I'll take one of them too and pair them with a, some of the older ones I do take hunting. I don't know, It's not a quiet hunt. Between the howls of the beagles, <laughs> calling the dogs back to you. Let's go, let's go! They're getting a little too far away, so we bring them back in. Come on! Here girls, here girls! Come on, come on, come on! Here he is, here he is, here he is! You're going to know a rabbit hunt is going down if you step into the same woods during one of these hunts. Not cooperating. Huh? I don't know, they just stayed too far away. Hey, Walking in them cedars will parallel each other. Let's go in another 75 yards into that. Rabbit hunting. You need to be in the right place at the right time and a circling rabbit is harder than you might think to get in your sights. The general consensus is they'll always circle back. Depending on day and the weather, sometimes they'll run a 200 yard circle and some days it's a thousand yard circle. They like to do their circles. They don't like to leave where they live. <laughs> no. This rabbit ain't cooperating. <laughs> this winter has been anything but normal. Our first scheduled rabbit hunt was called off due to bare ground and rain. This rabbit hunt seemed ideal, but with an impending snowstorm, our one and only snowstorm that hit, that night, the rabbits weren't moving. The dogs were more than happy to give it a try on another day. There's 800 acres of clear cut like this. It's thicker than dog hair and it's loaded with rabbits. Wait till you see the rabbits in here, Steve. Oh, yeah. Come on. This is it. We said this is it. There's rabbit tracks everywhere. It's a little thick. <laughs> rabbit chewings. Yeah, thick popples. Ooh, here's a fresh track. Hi, hey, sweetie. Hunt him up. Get the bunny. You get him? I 
I got the one Riley was on. We'll just slowly sashay over this way. So how do you know when to start looking for the rabbit? Hmm. Just when the dogs are generally coming in your direction. Then you kind of got to keep your head on a swivel, you know. Who did the shooting? That was me again, Jay. Ed, did you get him? Doesn't sound like it. One through these whips. I guess he's right in front of me there. 20 yards off the end of my barrel, maybe. Didn't shoot him up too bad. <laughs> One or two BBs got him, that's all. Good girl, yeah. Good girl, come on, Em. Hey, good girl. Good girl, yeah. We deviled that old rabbit, didn't we? <laughs> oh, and dog was driving. The rabbit came through. Seen me stop, turned around, and the dog stopped it again, and that was it for the rabbit. My big kill for today, so far. <laughs> there it is. Was it close? How far was it? Uh, it was quite a ways. It was probably 40 yards away, but I only hit it with one BB. We got a few rascally rabbits. Even though every day isn't successful, rabbit hunting is a pretty good way to spend a winter afternoon. Fresh air, friends, and it's quite a bit of exercise. In low snow conditions like we've been having this year, you'll put anywhere from six to 10 on walking. The dogs, the GPS keeps track of them. We hunted yesterday, we got eight rabbits. Dogs put on about 20 miles in four hours. We got, everyone got a rabbit and I clocked in just under 10 miles myself. Best part about rabbit hunting is you can do it more than any other season I think that's out there. It's in Wisconsin right over the border here. It's open 365 a year. In Michigan, it's open from September to April. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to go. You grab a couple dogs, a shotgun, and in just about any given day, in any condition, you can get a run going. You can do it. In physical activity, you aren't just sitting there, and you don't have to get up at three in the morning like you do duck hunting. You know, so it's uh. It's the most fun you can have with a dog, really, out in the woods. Um, I can't emphasize enough on handling, handling of a dog, especially in this day and age with wolves. Sometimes you gotta have that run end immediately and get the dogs back to you. If you cut a fresh wolf track, you gotta stop the run. That's the other thing. It can be the best dog in the world, but if it doesn't handle, it's gonna be street meat, get hit by a car, a snowmobile, killed by a wolf, you gotta have handling. So beagles are people pleasers too. They like, one of the handling techniques I use is just spending a lot of time with them in my kennel house here. After a few hours of hunting or running the dogs in the pen, right. it's back to the dog house. <laughs> he knows it's street time. Oh, she's just a little one. You can put her in her pocket, take her wherever you want. Oh, don't kiss her. This is all the founding members of the Gogebic Range Beagle Club. It started in 1946 or 47, right after World War II. I joined that club in 1993. Ribbons hang above the kennels from the Beagle field trials throughout the Midwest. Up here in Northern Michigan in the UP, there's, I believe there's five clubs holding about 10, 12 trials a year. Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Michigan, Fife Lake, Michigan, and a bunch of Iron Mountain. This one's kind of a special one. I got first, second, third out of 30 some dogs down in Illinois. And it's something anyone can get into. You don't have to have a big operation or anything. You can just have a host beagle. Some of the, I've hunted with some darn good dogs that were just host beagles, couch potatoes, and they 
they get out on the weekend and give her, you know. It's what they're bred to do and what they love to do. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.